Hey, Math 20-2s. So today we're going to do some problems involving normal distribution. Just a note, uh, I did lesson six before this lesson. So what that means is we're going to do graphing calculator work to solve these. We're not going to use z-score tables. All right. A light bulb manufacturer produces 35,000 light bulbs from past data. The lifetimes of bulbs are normally distributed with a mean life of 900. So you can put that in as your average, and your standard deviation is 50. Predict the percentage of light bulbs that will last between 825 and 875 hours. So there is 825, there is 875. Predict how many will last between those. All right. So with our calculator, we're going to go to normal CDF. And lower limit is 825, upper limit is 875. The mean is 900, and the standard deviation is 50. So you typed into your calculator, you're going to get the correct answer, 0 0.2417, and so on, which as a percentage would maybe be 24.2%. All right. Part B. Predict how many, no, sorry, how many of the 35,000 light bulbs would you expect to last between this? So the number of light bulbs, huh, number of light bulbs should be, there's 3,500 light bulbs and 24.2% of them or 0.2417 and so on will last between 825 and 825 hours. So you multiply those out, you get 8,460 light bulbs. All right. Part C, determine the probability that a bulb selected random will last less than 920. So again, the mean was 900, the standard deviation was 50. We want to know what the probability is they'll last less than 920 hours. So again, normal CDF. Lower limit is negative 10 to the 99th, right? The smallest number down here, this never ends. We're going to pick negative 10 to the 99. The upper limit is 920. The mean is 900. The standard deviation is 50. So you use your calculator to get there. That turns out to equal 0 0.6554, all right, roughly. Example two. A study showed that the mean duration of a certain strain of virus was 12 days with a standard deviation of 3. If the data is normally distributed, great, let's type that, put that in here. 12 days standard deviation is 3. If you recall, we did this on in lesson 6, but let's do it real quickly here again. Determine the probability of the nearest hundredth that lasts longer than 17 days. So here's 17, longer than that, using our calculator, we're going to go normal CDF. We're looking for the area under the curve, so that's normal CDF. Lower limit is 17, upper limit is 10 to the 99. This goes forever, never ends. Mean is 12, standard deviation is 3. You type that in your calculator, we're going to get 0 0.05 to the nearest hundredth. All right. Last between 13 and 15 days, well here's 12, standard deviation is 3. Here's 13, and there's 15, so we want that area under the curve. So again, normal CDF. Lower limit is 13, upper limit is 15, the mean is 12, and the standard deviation is 3. You type that in your calculator, and we're going to get 0 0.21. So we did those in Lesson 6. There they are again in Lesson 5. We also did this one in Lesson 6. From extensive testing, an appliance distribution company knows that the average life of toasty toasters is 4.2 years. Standard deviation is 0.65, and it's normally distributed. So as soon as I see it's normally distributed, I can write down my mean and my standard deviation. The company does not want to replace under warranty more than 8% of the toasters that are sold. So this area here is 0.08, or 8%. What warranty would we need? So what is that number going to be? So if we're doing something like this, we know the area under the curve. So if you know the area under the curve, we're going to use inverse normal on our calculators. 
So inverse normal, we type in the first thing is the area under the curve is 0 0.08. You need to know the mean and the standard deviation to use inverse normal. So we typed into our calculators, you're going to come up with 3.28. It says, what warranty to the nearest year? Well, we'd round this down to three years because we don't want to have more than 8% come back. So a three-year warranty. All right. Example four. It was found that 62.3% of the shrimp harvested at shrimp harvest farms had a mass of more than 135 grams. The data is normally distributed, has a mean mass, the shrimps, and if the mean mass of the shrimp harvested was 146, find the standard deviation. So we don't know the standard deviation, but we do know that 135 gram shrimp or more, 62.3% of the data is in there. So 0 0.623 is in that shaded section. What we're looking for then is the area left of this, and that's, we always need to know that area to use uh, in our calculators. So we know the total area under the curve is 1, so this green area is going to be 1 minus 0 0.623. So the area left of 135, or all the, the shrimp that have a mass less than 135 grams, is 0 0.3. Seven, seven. And how do I use that? I use that with my inverse normal function. Now I already know what the data value is, so what I'm going to do is convert this into a z-score. So what's a z-score that has a data value of 135? That's what we're going to find here. So I know the area under the curve is 0 0.377. I don't know the standard deviation, so I can't use um, inverse normal that way, but I will use the mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. And what this will give me is the z-score of the data value of 135. So you type that in your calculator, you get a z-score of negative 0 0.3134. All right. So that means the data value of 135 corresponds to a z-score of negative 0 0.3134. And now let's use our z-score for, z formula, which says our data value minus our mean divided by our standard deviation will equal our z-score. And if I use that formula, I can find my standard deviation. So a z-score negative 0 0.3134 would equal my data value 135 minus my mean 146 divided by my standard deviation. So I can multiply both sides by the standard deviation. And 135 minus 146 is negative 11. And I divide both sides by negative 0 0.3134. And we find out what the standard deviation equals. So you do that with your calculators. Negative 11 divided by negative 0 0.3134, and we get a standard deviation of 35.1. Right. Nice. And let's look at example 5. The marks of a large number of students have been represented on a standard normal distribution curve. The values given represent the number of students in each area. So between z-score 1 and 0, there's 452 people. Between 0 and the rest of the graph, there's 1,250 people. How many students are represented by the area under the standard normal curve? Well, if left, sorry, if right of the mean is 1,250 and that's half the data, then the total number of students should be 2 times 1250, or 2,500. Determine to the, the value of Z1 to the nearest hundredth. Well, in order to use our tables or our uh, data on the calculator, we need to know the area left of a Z-score. All right, so to find that area left of that Z-score, I need to know the number of students in there. So if half the data is 1250, and between Z1 and 0 is 452, left of the Z score should be 1250 minus 452. That's how many students are in there. So that's 798 students 
in that data value less than Z1. So what is that percentage? So 798 out of 2,500 is the percentage of students less than Z score 1, which is 0 0.3192. So that's what this area is, if you want to write that. 0 0.3192 is the area under the curve represented by 798 students in that, in that area. How do I find Z1, then? Well, if I know an area under the curve, I use inverse normal. So I put that area under the curve, 0 0.3192. The mean, well, on the Z score, the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. All right, mean is 0, standard deviation is 1. So if you type that into your calculator, you're going to get a Z score that corresponds to negative 0 0.47 to the nearest hundredth. All right. So away you go. Give these questions a try.